Welcome to Trauma Solve. I'm Maria Jordan McMahon. As promised, today I have the first interview that I'd like to show you in my Heroes series. The interview is with Kim Noble. She's an artist who suffers with disassociative identity disorder. Um, she was interviewed by Oprah a few years ago uh, about her art. She's a very talented and lovely person. We were privileged to spend the day with her where she described what life is like living with DID and also talked to us, answered our copious amounts of questions and talked to us about her art and her healing journey. She's a very inspirational person. She's been through a lot in her life and she's managed to make the best of her life, including being able to bring up her lovely daughter, Amy, who is now an adult and a very um, successful, lovely young woman. So I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, because one of the ways I always try to explain DID to somebody that has no understanding of it is that if um, if you're in bed asleep and then you, you get up and you're sleepwalking and you go around the house and perhaps eat a large cake and go back to bed and you have no memory of doing that during the night. I think it feels a bit similar to that. It's, it's you know, um, and what is that? Is that their subconscious? I don't know. Um, but they're doing things unaware of it. But I'm doing things unaware of it. But that is another personality and that personality's got a name. And not just, um, oh, this is um, angry Kim, oh, this is sad Kim, oh, this is happy Kim. It's actually, no, this is, you know, this is Ken and he's got all these different experiences. He can be happy, he can be sad, he can be, you know, pleasant, you know, with all of them. With my, my sort of DID, well, with my experiences of DID, I've had that for, you know, it's the norm for me. It's the norm for me to be with people that I don't know or haven't met before. And I just tend to listen and, and then can catch up in a conversation or um, and go along with it. I think that, you know, in anybody else um, that's going through the same, are in the same position as me, that have been through trauma and struggling, um, and it's very, very difficult. You, you, get, you get a label and, like with us, the label actually did help, um, which is really strange because I've always one, I've been one of these people that you know, have labels. It's not going to change who you are with a label, and it's it's not. But to actually get the right treatment, you actually need the right uh, diagnosis. And like for many years, I was diagnosed with schizophrenia and all different sorts of diagnosis, and um, and I actually didn't really get the right help until I was diagnosed with initially a, a dissociative disorder um, and that was when I was like 14 and then later on I got diagnosed with DID. Um, but I think the the thing is, is that, you know, I think everybody that's been through trauma um, really does need, need therapy and I think that's one thing that, you know, this country is not very forthcoming with um, funding and that is the thing that for me were, that is the only thing that helped me. Before I started treatment for um, DID, I was in and out of hospital, rather than just have been an outpatient and having um, therapy. I'd never have thought, you know, 20 years ago that I would be painting and I'd be in this position today. Um, you know, and things just happen and move on and, you know, it's, you know, there is a, a light at the end of the tunnel. I think that the um, the paintings have helped in the healing process because it helps me to know a bit more about personalities. Um, I'm not co-conscious. The paintings have um, taught me a lot about their feelings, thoughts, experiences. I feel being um, untrained, um, their work is coming from their heart. So it actually is not from their head, it's coming from their heart and then that's a blank canvas and they're trying to communicate something not just to me to all viewers um, by what they're painting it's sometimes it's quite shocking because like you know they do things that I know I wouldn't be able to do 
um, and so it feels really, really strange. It does feel as though, you know, some person's been in, painted in the art room and then gone out and left. It's a, you know, a, a bit like Banksy, isn't it? You know, he does these paintings and then disappears and, you know, it feels a bit, a bit like that. But when I first went in there and saw one of Ria's, um, which is the more graphic um, abuse pictures, I, I, I didn't actually find it pleasant. But that was her first one and um, after that you know, I got used to her paintings and, and even though they're difficult, you know, for her they're telling a story and she wants things to be seen and told so, um, you know, it's obviously helping her. I think all the personalities in their own right are, are healing through their own work as well. So for me, yes, it's a major healing because I'm learning about the others, but I'm sure when they are doing their artwork, like Ria, she's getting something off her chest and, and telling people, she's communicating what experiences you know she's been through. Through therapy, I've been told that, that the other personalities, they all have certain traits that I have, like they have a sense of humour, um, and you know, well, I think there's a lot of things mainly. My connection, I feel, isn't anything to do really with DID or the other person, there being other personalities. It's me, it's me just as a viewer liking the work. Um, sometimes there's a connection that I have no, I have no reason why I feel really drawn to that painting and what that connection is. Um, and it might be something, you know, in my subconscious that, you know, I'm not even aware of. But there's just sometimes there's a painting that, you know, and it might not be anybody else's favourite. It might be, you know, the worst painting that, you know, ever any of them have done. But for me, it's a, an important painting, it's a special painting. There's at least one, I'd say, from everybody that I feel that, you know, real connection that I'd like to keep that painting. I don't know how the personalities got named. I mean, it seems to be from you know a, a quite a young age. Um, so I don't know whether somebody else named them. Um, I also noticed that the names are from that time. There's Judy, and then there's Rebecca, and then there's some, well, Rebecca doesn't paint, and um, not does. Um, Kate and Katie, um, they don't paint, but Susan, she don't paint. But you know, there are um, older names. The youngest one I know, I think, is Katie, and I think she's about three. And they go up from there, up to our age now, 24. <laughs> but yeah, no, they, they, they go up to like the body's age which I'm not disclosing. At first there was only five or six of us were painting, and then gradually over the years, um, a few others have come in, um, and now I think it's 13. I feel that the, the um, styles are very different, and I think, well, they. I see, for me, they come from different people. You see, I, in one way, yes, they are personalities, but they, they are coming from different people um, who have had their own, thoughts, feelings and experiences, which some of the experiences are different than um, others. That's why it always bugs me, Abby's. And I'm not saying hers is great um, for, you know, somebody that's trained really do really, really excellent um, you know, pictures that do look photographic. That's right, photographically. But, you know, for me, I couldn't, I really, really could not get a proportion of a body right. Abby's fascinates me more so, even though it's not my favourite work, it's, you know, I like um, Anon's and I like Judy's work. I do like Anon's work and I do like her, her new one. Her palette is very limited, she doesn't use many colours, um, she likes black and white and black and white and purple. No Name is the last person to start painting. And I had to. I couldn't call. I couldn't call no name and non as well because it'd been two and on. So there's actually two artists that I haven't got the names of. From having therapy, obviously I feel yeah we're a hundred percent. You know, I mean I still think those personalities have got issues. Some personalities didn't come out enough to talk. Some people. Some personalities didn't come out at all. Um, and some personalities didn't have the time to work through their issues. You know, 
I think I, I've proved it, you know, I, I've proved that I can bring up a daughter, you know, and, you know, who is now a successful adult. Um, she's got her law degree and, you know, and, and she's doing very, very well. And yet, you know, 21 years ago, I was told that I'm an unfit mother, well, not that I'm an unfit mother, that I would, I would never, ever be uh, capable of bringing up a child. Um, you know, and you've just got to fight what you know is right, what you know is right in your heart. And I knew that we would make a good mother, all of us. Um, and how much the professionals um, were saying, no, 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 you've got the idea, you're not going, you won't. Um, you know, I fought to the end. Um, so, you know, and proved them all wrong. So, you've got to be strong and, you know, strive for what you want in your life.